ask that you summarize your testimony in five minutes. Mr. Chenoweth, you may begin. Chairman Massey, Ranking Member Correa, and other sub uh, subcommittee members, thanks for inviting today's testimony. My name is Mark Chenoweth. I'm the President and Chief Legal Officer of the New Civil Liberties Alliance, a nonpartisan nonprofit civil rights organization founded by Columbia Law School professor Philip Hamburger to combat unlawful administrative power. NCLA's 14 attorneys pursued more than 50 original litigation cases against unlawful administrative agency actions last year alone, including two of them that Chairman Nadler mentioned. This work gives us an up-close, real-world look into the various ways in which administrative adjudication violates Americans' civil liberties. Adjudications, by the way, that enmesh 10 times more people than do federal district courts. So your constituents may actually be familiar with this process. My written testimony compiles a list of 25 pathologies of administrative adjudication for the committee's benefit. Before discussing a few of these, I'd like to highlight the legal mistake behind administrative adjudication. It's typically understood that federal agencies have no power to act unless Congress gives it to them. But the Constitution gives Congress only legislative powers. Congress cannot delegate a power it does not have, so it cannot delegate judicial power. Article III's vesting of judicial power in the courts is exclusive and mandatory. It says, quote, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish, unquote. By saying the judicial power shall be vested, Article III made clear that the location of that power was mandatory. It authorizes Congress to locate judicial power only in inferior courts, not administrative agencies. In setting up administrative tribunals then, Congress has unconstitutionally divested the courts of their judicial power, so it needs to unwind much of this unlawful regime. Apart from these structural constitutional violations, administrative adjudication violates the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, and the Seventh Amendment. When I speak of Fifth Amendment violations, I'm chiefly referring to the lack of due process. Agency proceedings scrap the federal rules of civil procedure and the federal rules of evidence, substituting the agency's own rules or making things up as they go. Worse yet, a fundamental tenet of due process is an impartial judge, but ALJs are structurally biased in a pro-agency direction. They're not allowed to question the constitutionality or legality of the laws or regulations they enforce. They routinely shift the burden of proof to the respondent. They are beholden to their agency for their very employment. Unlike the Department of Justice in criminal cases, agencies are also not required to turn over exculpatory evidence to targets of enforcement. So even if the agency has proof of your innocence, it doesn't have to share that with you. Where is the justice in that? Sometimes the due process violations are even grosser. In early April 2022, SEC disclosed a so-called control deficiency, admitting that its enforcement staff had illegally accessed the files of its in-house judges in NCLA client Michelle Cochran's case, in George Jarkissi's case, and eventually in dozens of other cases. As the Wall Street Journal put it, it's the equivalent of a party in litigation having access to a judge's briefs from her law clerks. SEC dismissed 42 pending enforcement cases to dodge accountability for this unbelievable travesty of justice, and Congress needs to get to the bottom of it. But note that this kind of sloppy cross-contamination of functions illustrates the weakening of the separation of powers when they're combined in a single agency. This could never have happened at the Department of Justice. They don't share the same computer system with the judges. In terms of the Sixth Amendment, one aspect of NCLA client Ray Lucia's administrative prosecution deserves special mention. Ray Lucia tried to call his witnesses clients who would testify that they had never been misled or defrauded by him or his use of the term backtest. Before they could testify, the SEC served those witnesses with last-minute subpoenas that required them to turn over all their financial records for the last five years from any source whatsoever on penalty of perjury. Despite being loyal clients, they didn't want to subject themselves to such an onerous and privacy and security violating a task, so they declined to testify. Having withdrawn them from his witness list, Ray proceeded to judgment before his ALJ without a single client witness to speak in his defense. Such witness intimidation would never be countenanced in a real federal court by a real federal judge. Such witness intimidation, in fact, uh, violates the Sixth Amendment, which guarantees the right to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in one's favor. But that right to secure witnesses not only doesn't obtain in administrative adjudications, as it does in federal court, but apparently witnesses who have agreed to testify can be excluded by agency dirty tricks. The Seventh Amendment is violated because rather than have facts found by a jury, the ALJ finds the facts in an agency proceeding, and the agency controls the administrative record on appeal. So even when a case reaches an Article III court for review, there has never been a jury, and the factual record amassed below gets deferred to by the judge. The Seventh Amendment guarantees the right to trial by jury in suits at common law. It thereby applies to all civil actions other than in admiralty and equity, including actions brought to enforce statutory rights that are analogous to common law causes of action ordinarily decided in English law courts in the 18th century. Equity involved property and contract claims, not government enforcement, and federal agencies do not sit in admiralty, so agencies routinely violate defendants' Seventh Amendment rights by conducting enforcement proceedings without a jury. 
For all these reasons, administrative adjudication is an abomination. It supposedly provides expert judges and more efficient proceedings in exchange for the denial of due process protections, but in truth, ALJs are not experts, administrative tribunals are not efficient, and the denial, and the denial of due process in agency tribunals with structurally biased umpires is pernicious. Congress has the power to abolish unlawful administrative tribunals and restore the Fifth, Sixth, and Seventh Amendment rights of the people currently subjected to these proceedings. It should do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chenoweth. Professor Mascott, 